BitTorrents are all the rage for DOS attacks, the IRS announces new breach numbers, and Microsoft is on a disabling rampage. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Hello world, I'm Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for August 19, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Thanks for joining us for another episode. Let's get right to the top stories. uTorrent, Mainline, Views, all BitTorrent applications used to host and see download files from person to person. Well, it turns out they are also the host of a new denial of service attack, specifically a distributed reflective denial of service attack, or a DRDOS for short. Announced by a group of researchers in a paper called P2P File Sharing in Hell, this attack lets one user of the software send malformed requests to another BitTorrent user. That requested data floods a third-party target with data from 50 to 120 times larger in size. These really big packets of data flying into a victim's machine go way too fast, and the machine basically passes out. The underlying problem is with UDP, or User Datagram Protocol, which has no way of preventing fake IP addresses. This lets the attacker change their IP address and flood a victim's computer with requests that look like they are actually real. Now, by using this DRDOS attack, it hides the attacker, it can be attempted by only one machine, and the requests end up being up to that 120 times larger at most. Now, while this isn't necessarily new, the researchers recommend anti-spoofing filtering techniques, a three-way handshake such as TCP instead of UDP, which doesn't use that, and requiring a special token of data to keep an attacker from adding other peers in the application. Back in May, we learned of a really big IRS breach to their Get Transcript system, which a user can create an account on to gain access to their tax returns and a bunch of other information that the IRS has. At the time, it was thought that over 114,000 households probably had their information stolen. Now that number is looking more like 300,000, with 600,000 suspicious attempts made, which means that criminals had a 50% success rate via the Get Transcript website. That's kind of huge. All they had to know was a person's name, the birth date, social security number, their tax filing status, which basically is on Facebook, and their address. Unfortunately, with all the breaches that have been happening in the past few years, that information is not hard to come by. The IRS took down the online site to sign up, but you can still receive a transcript by mail with the same information, meaning that if a thief really wanted to, they could still steal your information. Credit protection will be offered to expose taxpayers according to the IRS. Sadly, though, this hack is not over. They're still investigating it, and it's ongoing. It could be much worse. You may want to wait on upgrading to Windows 10 if you're using counterfeit software or hardware. According to the EULA, Section 7B, quote, sometimes you'll need software updates to keep using the services. We may automatically check your version of the software and download software updates or configuration changes, including those that prevent you from accessing the services, playing counterfeit games, or using unauthorized hardware peripheral devices. So basically, when you turn on Cortana, you've accepted that EULA in Windows 10, and while I understand what counterfeit games are, and that's so horrible, what is unauthorized hardware peripheral devices? Is that like non-Microsoft certified Xbox controllers? I mean, I'm all for catching thieves, but I'm not too keen on how much scanning they're going to be doing on my own system to thwart other criminals. Lastly, I wanted to mention a couple of other stories that hit the news just now. First, the Ashley Madison breach of data has been posted online, totaling 9.7 gigabytes in size, with about 32 million users' information being made public. And second, the Wi-Fi service provider Smart City Holdings has agreed to pay the FCC $750,000 for blocking personal cell phone data plans while people use convention centers for cons and trade shows. This comes months after a similar lawsuit against Marriott for doing a similar, similar block of their hotel conference areas. And finally, remember when Target got hacked? I'm pretty sure we all remember that. Well, Target now has to cough up about $67 million, or up to that amount, to Visa on behalf of credit card issuers on that brand. And MasterCard strikes a similar deal as well. Now this reminds me kind of of when I worked as a merchant payment system company. I worked at one and I would always tell merchants it costs a lot less to upgrade to better security than it does to actually get fined by Visa and MasterCard. 
True story. Now check out our Patreon page to find out how you can help us keep this show coming ad-free and completely independent. We might even throw in some cats and dogs like these ones for good measure because we love these guys and they're freaking adorable. So thank you to all of you that find value in ThreatWire and contribute to its success, especially those guys. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place for that. And of course, liking the show, subscribing. I'm sure there's a subscribe button around here somewhere if you're watching on YouTube. All that is very important too to get the word out. Go to ThreatWire.net for all the things. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.